Good morning and welcome to Yokohama Christchurch on this, the second Sunday in the season of Lent. As usual, our responses for today's liturgy will appear on the screen, but you can also download or access the, the Sunday Bulletin from our website or with the links on our Facebook page. And they also contain their our prayer intentions and notices for the week ahead. Come to us, Lord Jesus Christ, as you stood among your disciples in your resurrection body, so be present with us now. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and in faith. Almighty Father, judge of all, we have sinned against you in what we have thought, said and done. We have not loved you with all our hearts. We have not loved your people as ourselves. Forgive us for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and help us to serve you in the new life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. 
So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him, gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, were raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, 
nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said this all quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The uh, image on the front of today's bulletin of a person shouldering a cross strikes at the very heart of the kind of faith that we are thinking about in the light of today's scripture readings. The Gospel from St Mark's 8th chapter provides us with the words of Jesus who tells us that if we want to follow him, then we have to be prepared to take up our cross and carry it. But do we really understand what that means? Do we know what that image on the front of today's bulletin means for us and for our lives of faith? The problem is that the English, in the English language there are lots of examples of the use of carrying a cross. We say that someone who is suffering has a cross to carry in life. Often we think of the cross someone bears as a burden inflicted upon them through no fault of their own. For example, a person who is born with a disability or someone who has a terrible accident and suffers severe injury, that is their cross. We might think of people we know who have lost their job and are now unemployed and are really struggling to survive. Perhaps we have someone in our family who has cancer and is spending a lot of time in hospital. These examples of disability, illness or hardship are indeed very heavy burdens that people carry. As a result, we should always be compassionate and caring towards them and try our best to help them in any way we can and, of course, to pray for them. But... These are not the kind of things that Jesus is talking about in our gospel today. When Jesus says to us that we should take up our cross, he is asking us to carry a cross like his own. 
And there are two very important things to remember about the cross of Jesus. Firstly, it was a cross that Jesus willingly picked up and carried. And secondly, it was a cross taken up for the benefit of others. The cross of which Jesus speaks is something that we voluntarily decide to do. It is not something inflicted upon us without our consent. Neither is it some tragedy or difficulty that we are forced to endure. Jesus does not tell us to bear our cross. Jesus asks us to pick it up. Life is full of burdens we have to bear because we can't escape them. But the cross, we can simply decide to leave it where it is. Even Jesus had the choice before him. That's why in the Garden of Gethsemane we read in Matthew 26 verse 39 how Jesus struggled. He threw himself on the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Jesus had the power to avoid death on the cross, but he chose to accept it. Let this cup pass from me, Father, yet not what I want, but what you want. And furthermore, this cross that Jesus asks us to pick up and to carry is there for the benefit, not of ourselves, but for others. It's not something that we deliberately inflict upon ourselves so that people will feel sorry for us or pity us. The cross is suffering we take up in order to help others, even as Jesus went to Calvary for the salvation of the world. And so, for example, when we think of the terrible suffering at the moment as a result of the global pandemic caused by the coronavirus, we know that there are people suffering greatly because of it. So many have died, and so many are still in hospital, and many more who have not been infected with COVID-19 itself have experienced genuine hardship and suffering as a result of the consequences of the virus on daily life across the world. Many people today have a great burden to carry, but this is not the type of cross that Jesus is talking about in today's Gospel. Rather, we should think of all the doctors, the nurses and the aid workers who each and every day choose to enter situations of great personal risk to themselves in order to provide care and medical attention to those who are sick. This is the kind of cross that Jesus is talking about. The cross is carried by those who show love and compassion to people whom they do not even know and who accept the risks involved. Jesus knows that when he asks us to pick up our cross and follow him, that he is asking us to do something that is no easy thing. That's why St. Peter took Jesus to one side and rebuked him in today's Gospel. What Jesus asked of us goes against the grain. To bear one's cross does not mean to deal with what life hands you, but to take up what life hands another. Our faith is not some intellectual assent to certain propositions. Rather, faith is about the losing of our lives for the sake of the gospel. That is the cross that Jesus asks all of us today to pick up and carry. This is the call of the Lord especially during this season of Lent. It is a true Lenten penance, not giving up some pleasure for the sake of our own souls or our own waistline, 
but taking up some difficult work for the sake of others. Lent is always a great time to ask ourselves some important and some difficult questions. What cross are you prepared to pick up during this season of Lent? What can you do? What can you do without thought of personal reward or even satisfaction? What can you do without thought of being worried by criticism or being misunderstood by friends and family? The answer may be different for each one of us, but in that answer may lie the cross that you are being asked to pick up and carry today. And if we are concerned about the impact of carrying that cross for others and in the name of Christ, let us not forget, finally, the encouraging words of St. Paul in today's epistle. May they give us the confidence to willingly pick up that cross and shoulder its burden for others. Because we are assured that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus invites us all. Take up your cross and follow me. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do your will. Amen. Amen. And now we join together in the baptismal creed, the creed, the ancient creed of the Apostles. As we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O oh God, we come to you with joy, for we are inheritors of the kingdom. We share with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in your promises. We rejoice in your love and salvation as we bring before you our prayers. This week, we invite you to please pray for in the world for the people of Myanmar, for those affected by COVID-19, for all frontline medical personnel, for those preparing for baptism, for grace to keep a holy Lent. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Anglican Church of Central America. In the Mission to Seafarers, we pray for MTS Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, and Tasmania ports. In our diocese, we pray for St. Mary's Church in Nagasaki, 
for those who are sick or in special need. We continue to pray for Paul Hoshino, Maurice Morel, Kathy Langley, Janet Brown, and Rafi Burns. And for those who have recently died, we pray for the repose of their souls. Lord, as we have received from you, may we bring light and hope to others. We pray for the wavering in faith and for the weak in spirit. We pray for lapsed Christians and for all who have never known you. We pray for the joy and the mission of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the hope of all the world. We pray for better relationships between nations, for a greater sense of belonging to one great family. We pray today for the United Nations, for programs for peace, for a deepening of goodwill among those once at war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for all who through good relationships have shown your love. We pray for all whom we love and all who love us, for the recently engaged and the newly married. We pray for any, any who are struggling in their relationships at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we come with all who have suffered at the hands of others, all refugees and homeless peoples, dispossessed and distraught peoples. We pray for those afraid of any relationships, all who can no longer trust anyone, those who cannot trust themselves. We pray for all who are ill and for their loved ones in their anxiety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have been faithful to you. We pray for those who now rejoice in your love and peace in its fullness. For all the departed, especially those known to and remembered by us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We keep a moment of silence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. We sing the offertory here.
Mighty God and Father, accept these gifts and these our offerings and use them in your saving work. All things come, come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly fitting and right and profitable to our salvation that at all times and in all places we give you thanks, Holy Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you have made all things. For he is the one whom you sent to be our Saviour and Redeemer, made flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. In fulfilment of your will and obtaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands and his passion to destroy death and make known the resurrection. And now we give you thanks, because through him you have given us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace. And therefore, with the angels and all the saints, we proclaim your glory, as with one voice we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Send down your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this bread and this chalice, we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. May all of us who partake of your holy mysteries be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. May we praise you in union with all the saints and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, in your holy church, both now and to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread. We share in the body of Christ. The bread we share is one. Though we are many, we are one body. Lamb of God, who you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assert and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and forevermore. Amen. Go forth with Christ. In the name of the Lord. Amen.